So I've been testing the B136 watt laser engraver for a while now and boy oh boy you're about to have some fun. 30 watt power, 600 millisecond engraving speed, cuts through 5 cm acrylic. What a machine. In the past I mentioned that the longer Ray 5 10 watt was the best budget engraver available especially for beginners. And this is their next improvement. Should you get it? To answer that question I've done a lot of tests so you can decide for yourself. But first, let's take a quick look at what comes in the box. A box packed with high quality parts. You get the mainframe, some access belts, the laser module, air pump, glasses, an instruction manual, USB cable, Wi-Fi, power supply, the main screws, adjustable legs and some extra parts. Out of all the desktop engravers I've reviewed, this has the bulkiest build. So let's get it together and see what it can do. Now the 36 watt laser model actually has 6 cores. Each core has around 6 watts and that's how you get 36. This is pretty good because it keeps machine prices low while it keeps the power up. But keep in mind that this also means that you're not going to get the full 36 watts. It's going to be closer to 30 to 33 watts. And all those cores make the unit need a strong fan to keep the area cool. And a fun fact, you can get the B1 machine with a 24 or 42 watt laser instead. To get the best price for the machine you can check the links in the description below. Now what does all this power mean? What can a 36 watt engraver actually do? Well based on my tests it can definitely do all the basics. Like engraving wood, acrylic, aluminum, stainless steel, stone, leather etc. And it engraved them fast. As for cutting, it's supposed to be able to cut through a whopping 25mm basswood and 50mm acrylic. Longer claims that this is possible because they've improved the issue of depth of cut that all diode lasers face so that it beats all competitors. So to verify these claims, I'm putting the B1 against all of its competitors. Let's see how well it does. I'm gonna put them through some pretty tough tests. It's gonna be an interesting video, you should check it out. But for now, let's see what this machine is capable of. Now here we have 2 cm thick cherry wood, which is double the density of basswood. So let's cut it. At a speed of 4 mm per second, how many passes is it going to need? It needed around 10. If you noticed, the first few passes already cut through 80% of the material. It was the last 20 that was hard to cut. So considering this was a dense piece of hardwood, the machine did a good job. And as a point of reference, 2 cm is already thicker than most office desks. But can it go deeper? Let's take this test to the extreme and see how far it can actually cut. Let's place the plank sideways. Ah by the way, you see this little knob here? I'm loving it. Why? I don't need to keep looking for the leveling unit. It's built into the machine compared to other engravers I've tested which have this come separately making it easy to misplace. Honestly I was worried that this screw pin here won't be strong enough to hold the machine but turns out it works fine. So let's start the experiment. Not bad, it got to around 2.4 cm total and the first 1.5 cm were cut perfectly with no charring. So this is consistent with the 2.5 cm basswood claims. What about speed? The machine is supposed to be able to move around 36,000 mm per minute or 600 mm per second. This is what that looks like. Pretty fast right? I'll show you in a sec that it can actually engrave at that speed too. Keep in mind, normally with a lot of speed you get backlash from your belt systems. But one of my favorite upgrades on this machine helps manage this backlash. In the older or longer Ray 5, the belt system required the user to make the right judgment and right guessing to get the belt in the perfect length. But with this model, it's all arranged for you. You just slot the cable through these two areas and it's ready to go. And as a result, you get a double layer belt instead of a single one, which should reduce backlash instantly. Here are some tests done on different materials. You can see when engraving wood, even at max speeds, it can engrave pretty deep. The same applies to leather, aluminum and stone. Another huge upgrade this machine gets from the Ray 5 are the X and Y limit switches. They are no longer manual but automatic. 
The moment the machine hits the switch, it knows to stop. This works perfectly with the homing button. But I did realize if you home your machine and then try to go for a second pass, the machine is a little off every time. So don't home your machine in the middle of a project. What do I think about the air pump? Well, it's alright. Definitely better than no air assist. Here's an example. But if it were a little stronger, it would have been better. Okay, after testing all the materials, here are some cool engravings found on each of them. The laser spot is at 0.08 by 0.1 mm, which is surprisingly a little worse than the Ray 5. But that accuracy can get you to 300 dpi. My favorite engravings that require high details were on aluminum and stone. And here are some images tested. Overall, you can see all the details. Of course, the type of material you use is going to have a huge impact on the quality, darkness and contrast of your results. The connectivity of the longer? Well, it's interesting. You have the standard USB cable, which is my preferred method. But thanks to the 32 chip motherboard, there is also Wi-Fi connectivity, an app and a TF card with a one button press. Initially, I was confused and a bit worried. I was like, where's the touchscreen? But actually, connecting it through Lightburn and working directly from the software was very nice. It was no hassle at all. As for safety features, the B1 is packed with safety features. It has a fire sensor to stop the machine in an emergency, a machine tilt automatic stop, an emergency button you can press, as well as two on-off buttons. When I was using the older version, the Ray 5, the fire sensor kept getting activated from the sunlight. It was pretty frustrating, but the B1 so far hasn't had this issue. You can get different upgrades on this machine. You can get a rotary roller, an extension kit, and a camera. Now, let's talk about my concerns. Number 1. The user manual wasn't clear enough. Makes you have to put more efforts than needed in the assembly process. Number 2. The fan on the laser is great to keep it from overheating. But it's quite noisy, and if used in an enclosure box, it starts dragging in all the dust that's being engraved. Now I was this close to having a third concern, because look at this, these were supposed to be clean circles. But I realized that the belts were quite loose, so I adjusted them, and this is what I got afterwards. Now these circles are perfect. But I'm not a big fan of the placement of the ports for the USB and power cables. I mean, shouldn't they be on the side? Those were all my main concerns. Let's see all the good, all the bad, and see if this machine's worth it. Price? For the power? It's very good. Laser power? It does what it claims. Great. Laser accuracy? Overall images and engravings have very fine details, so very good. Machine durability? Great. Super sturdy. Connectability, very good and simple. High speed engraving, as seen in the tests, even at max speed, it's great. Safety features, great. Instruction manual, it has room for improvement. Installation difficulty, easy, so very good. Machine noise, it's noisy, so no good. The air pump, it's kinda weak and the ports aren't in the best place. Is this laser engraver worth the extra price? If you're still not sure and that wasn't enough, you're going to want to watch my next video comparing these monsters together. That video is coming soon. Once again, links can be found in the description and have an awesome day.